Hello everyone, my name is Space Mike and today I wanted to talk about an awesome rocket launch that's happening this month. SpaceX is launching a mission for a company called Spaceflight Industries who hosts secondary payloads like microsatellites and CubeSats on multiple rockets and many different types of missions. And they do this with their Sherpa ring adapter. Normally they fly secondary payloads beneath the primary payload. But this mission is special because it's a dedicated space flight on a Falcon 9 rocket for just their Sherpa adapter and over 71 spacecraft for over 35 customers from 18 different countries. The mission is called SSO-A, SmallSat Express. SSO stands for Sun Synchronous Low Earth Orbit, and because the mission is headed to low Earth orbit, most of the satellites are going to re-enter the atmosphere within a few years. Of all the different microsatellites and CubeSats on board this flight, there's one spacecraft in particular that is a country's first, the JY-1Sat, and it's for the country of Jordan. It's a simple one-unit CubeSat and an amateur radio mission with a few other communication capabilities as well. Just a few weeks ago, I had the privilege of visiting the country of Jordan myself. This is just incredible to be here. I cannot believe that, that we're actually here. And thanks to Relief International, my group got to visit with refugees who were living in the refugee camps there. We're trying to help the students living there by creating maker spaces and a cube set of our own. From the Al Zatari refugee camp in Jordan, thank you NASA for 60 years of bringing the world together. Happy birthday NASA! Happy birthday NASA! <laughs> More about that project later. While in Jordan's capital city of Amman, we had the honor of visiting the Crown Prince Foundation, who sponsored the JY1SAT and built the CubeSat with the cooperation of Jordanian universities. The Crown Prince Foundation is conducting multiple initiatives to help elevate the youth of Jordan. Some of those initiatives are just focused on leadership and entrepreneurship skills, while others are looking more at science, technology, engineering, art, and math. One of those initiatives has a lab called TechWorks, where the JY1SAT was designed, tested, and built. So, we had the pleasure of touring the TechWork facility, and it was amazing. They had so many different kinds of 3D printers, including a massive printer in the center of the lab. It was so cool to see that they had so many different experiments and inventions, testing out different types of materials and printing techniques. They also had an automated woodcutter that could be programmed with a 3D image that would cut the image out of or into a block of wood. They also had laser etching machines, a 3D printer that they built themselves, automated embroidery machines, CNC machines, and so much more. In particular, I was incredibly impressed by an effort to begin manufacturing their own microchips. They have a long way to go, but they are working hard to develop their own technologies and their own industry in Jordan. I was in shock when I saw these chips. Now, the JY1SAT was built from off-the-shelf parts from vendors all over the world, but they aim to build future satellites entirely on their own, as well as so many other different technologies, projects, and inventions. While we were on our tour of their incredible facility, we stumbled across Sanad Haddad, the coordinator for the Maser Initiative and the NASA internships through the Crown Prince Foundation. He had a crucial role in developing the JY1SAT, and so he sat down to talk with us and teach me even more about the CubeSat. Uh, we thought of a payload that could broadcast our heritage, including pictures, videos about some, uh, some places in Jordan like Petra, Wadram, and things like that as well as uh, sending uh, a message from our crown prince to the world and to the hobbyists in, in, in the space sector. So what does JY1SAT mean? Where, where does that name come from? Sure. Well, our, our king, the father of the king, uh, King Hussein, uh, had a call sign, uh, JY1. 
he was an, uh, a radio amateur and he was communicating through satellites and as part of our responsibility uh, uh, for, for his passion to space we wanted to name our satellite uh, JY1SAT and JY1 is actually the cold sign of His Majesty King Hussein. But of course I wanted to know if they already had plans for more satellites. Well, we are currently negotiating with a few partners like, uh, like Arabia Weather and some and the Regional Space Center who actually has been implemented and just started working in Jordan. And we were discussing uh, designing a 3U cube satellite. Uh, and, and it's still back and forth discussion on what kind of payload and you know it's a 3U cube sat, first of all it needs, it needs a budget. Uh, and I think uh, I think there is interest, and and we have the we have the potential, we have the know-how. So I don't think we will stop here. Probably my favorite part was when I asked him about the struggles of starting from scratch, and Sanad had this to say. At the beginning, it was really a challenge because uh, there is no space programs in Jordan, and I think starting a CubeSat mission uh, was not easy. There is no limitation to whatever you can do. Uh, even if you don't have the resources, if you don't have everything, uh, you have to start. You have to believe in yourself, and you have to uh, you have to proceed. Sometimes, sometimes uh, you are uncertain if you're capable or not. But I am someone who really believe, even if you are uncertain, just just believing in yourself and doing it and figuring things out while you're doing it, it it's it's a good thing. And and you don't have to put yourself down, but rather believe of your capabilities and, and everyone has to do the best to their abilities and, and, and I'm sure anyone is capable to do anything. Wow, I'd say that is even more evidence that spaceflight brings out the best in people and it brings people together. <clears throat> I am so excited about this mission, especially for the first satellite of Jordan because I got to see where it was made and I got to meet some of the people that built it. Okay, sure, maybe I'm a little bit biased for that, but I genuinely hope that this mission will be a success for them, and they'll be able to spread their message to the Middle Eastern world and be able to do even more spacecraft projects in the future. If all goes well, I'm hoping to attend the launch in person. The Falcon 9 is scheduled to launch on November 19th from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, and I cannot wait to see it happen. In the meantime, check out links in the description for more information about the Crown Prince Foundation and their initiatives that built the JY1 sat. We here at Borderless Labs admire the Crown Prince Foundation a lot. Their goals align very closely to our own, and this is the type of thing that we want to see happening in the world. No matter who you are or where you are in the world, everyone deserves to have opportunities in science, technology, engineering, art, and math. <sighs> so with that in mind, stay tuned for our big announcement coming soon about how we're going to try to be the change we want to see in the world. So thank you very much for watching this video. We are Borderless Labs, bringing the world together through STEAM. Until the next time I see you guys, keep on moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, Ad Astra, to the stars.